Hello there, this is Denise from Foursquare Marco Farm, and this is another uh, pattern review. This is the historical pattern uh, from the Work Woman's Guide, and this is the pot holder. I did say that I was going to knit the pot holder, um, and I didn't knit it from the Devon, so here it is. And I've got my breed study book open, but this is not from my breed studies. This is the Masham, I think is how you say it, um, top. Uh, is one ounce of this, about 60 yards, it says. Three ply, 12 reps per inch. Okay, and um, this particular yarn is from uh, Nancy, who's known on Ravelry as Knit Fairy. And it's part of the stash that I inherited from Nancy. And uh, this is one of the samples of the breed studies that was already done. And so I'm making good use of her yarn. Now, so far in that stash, I haven't found any of this that isn't spun. So I guess at some point when I get around to this particular breed, I'll try to do my breed study. Um, a spinning breed study of my own. But for now, I'm going to use this. And let me give you a good look at it. It's also a coarse breed. Let me get real closer. That's very, but it's very pretty. And so I'm making the pot holder from this. And this is a very uh, simple pattern, very basic pattern. I'm such a tight knitter. The next one I make, I'm going to remember that uh, there are eight rows of garter stitch here. And of course, for me, that was pretty loose. Uh, the trouble came for me when I started to double knit that it was so tight up here. And so uh, when I, well, I'll fix as much as I can by blocking, but I'll make sure for the next one to just have a looser hand at the double knitting. Okay, so basically, like I said, the first eight rows are um, garter stitch. And here's how the double knitting works. As far as this pattern is concerned, I know there's a use of the word double knitting, for color work, but that is not the same as this, as the historical version. So at the first four, you knit. So you're always knitting the first four and the last four on both ends. Okay, for the double knitting, you knit the first one. You're gonna bring the yarn to the front, slip this stitch, take your yarn to the back. Bam, and that's it. Now you can see how tight I'm holding this and that's what happens here. So I'm working on loosening that up, but the faster I go, the more likely I am to tighten that up. So I'm trying to get a little extra slack there. And knitting into the camera is the funny part. So I'm always like, should I watch my hands? Or should I watch the camera? I'm trying to watch the camera to make sure my hands stay in the view, but Instinctively, I want to look down at my hands. And then, though, see, I'm trying not to pearl out. You're slipping it. Remember to slip it. Remember not to pearl it. Just to slip it. You're just wrapping it. Just pretty much like a short row wrap and turn. Fight the urge. You go. If you've ever tried knitting in front of a camera, you'll know how this feels. Your arms are way down there and you're just like, I would like to bring this closer. Okay, I get to the end. Kind of forgot what I was doing. And I've got the last four and I knit. So I turn my work, I repeat that across again, knitting the first four, uh, knit one, bring the work to the front, 
wrap, um, bring it, take it to the back, and then knit one. Bring the working yarn to the front, slip, take it to the back. Okay, I think I got the sequence right again. Let me do it on the camera so that I'm showing you what I'm saying at the same time. Okay, let me do this while I'm doing it. Make sure I'm saying the right thing. Okay, two. Okay. Knit one. Bring it to the front. Slip. Take it to the back. And that's where I get real tight at, so I'm trying to hold that differently. Okay, so we repeat that. Knit one. Bring it to the front, slip one, take it to the back. And then what you're seeing here is you're going to get the knit V on both sides. So there's no knit on one side and purl pattern on the other side. You're just getting the knit V on both sides. Now, I continue to knit this until this is roughly a square in the middle. Okay. So I'm going to, what I did to check before is I folded it diagonally uh, in those two middle parts and kind of checked. And it gives me a rough estimate of how many more rows I have to go before this pretty much becomes a square. Uh, or of course you can count because you have your stitches across here. You know how many that is. You need to have the same number of stitches going lengthwise. Bam, and then you know you got a square. The pattern is not very specific about that, but the translator from the um, old historical pattern to the modern pattern, she says that she knit about 17 rows roughly, and uh, that's how she got that. So I'm going to go ahead and knit up the rest of the rows and then come back and show you pretty much how this looks. But I think you have a basic idea of where I'm going with this. Here it is, all done. Uh, let me see. You can see this, it's like uh, six by six here. And I gotta tell you that since I didn't actually spin this particular skein, this is probably the fastest um, pattern spotlight I've ever done. Actually, probably a really short video, but just wanted to give you an idea of the pot holder. I'm thinking next time I'm probably going to make a couple more to go to my Etsy shop for um, reenactors. And I think next time I will probably use a bigger needle. Of course, knowing how tight I knit. And uh, I still haven't figured out a way to resolve that. I think it's just who I am. But knowing how tight I knit, I would have uh, preferred this to be a little bigger and to give it some more room. So I'll use a bigger needle next time. I'll take that into consideration. But it's a, it's a cute little knit. Um, it'll make a very nice pot holder. Uh, because this is a felting wool, I'd be really careful uh, about the washing of it. Um, but of course, being wool, you can set a really hot pot down on it. And it won't, you know, really do too much damage to it. Like some other fibers would or just... Um, you know, the regular polyester stuff you get at uh, the big chain stores or what have you. I think the next one, too, I think I'll do it in one of the down breeds or one of the hill breeds. Um, the Dorset or the Suffolk or the Cheviot. That'll give a little more resistance to felting. So it won't shrink to be so small uh, over time. Which isn't totally a bad thing because if I make this big enough and it shrinks down, you get a really nice piece of felt. And that's still very excellent for a pot holder. Okay, so I will put the link to the pattern, both the modern interpretation. And on the page with the modern inter interpretation is the link that will take you to the actual uh, 1840s book that the pattern comes from. And the author of the modern interpretation tells you exactly what page to find this pattern on. So if you want to see the actual pattern 
um, the original pattern. You can have a look at that. Okay, thanks for watching. I want to thank all my subscribers. And if you're not a subscriber, go ahead and subscribe and click the like button. And as always, if you have any questions about this pattern or anything else you'd like me to talk about in a video, go ahead and put that in the comments. And I'm really happy to um, answer any questions or make any particular videos that would help you in the spinning, uh, weaving, knitting, or any of those kind of fiber arts areas. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.